Uh, Makos are probably the fastest shark in the sea. They get up to about 35 kilometers an hour. Um, they're really closely related to the great white, um, except they're only about three and a half to four meters long. And that's about 400 kilos. I ended up being a marine biologist um, probably because I was a really big nerd in my teens and I really liked keeping tropical fish. Um, so I went to uni to learn about saltwater fish and then I ended up getting into sharks. So catch and release is always thought to be a more sustainable method because you're releasing alive animals back into the ocean. So anglers can still go out and have fun while they're fishing and, and, then, and not impact the actual population. There's actually no evidence that says that animals actually survive after they've been released or whether or not they die post-release due to stresses of capture. Catch and release fishing has always had the uncertainty that there's not any evidence supporting that sharks actually survive after they've been released. Uh, my project's looking at whether or not the shark makos in, in particular actually survive after they've been released. So a couple of years ago there was a ban on the fishing of makos in Australia. Um, this came about because there was uh, population declines in the Mediterranean and also because international authorities listed the species as migratory. Soon after it was overturned again by the Australian government because of lobbying. The main argument was that there was limited evidence supporting the linkages between Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere populations of makos. So I'm looking at whether or not makos survive after they've been released um, using two main techniques. The first one is we actually go out and catch the makos and we put satellite tags in them. These tags are designed for use in survivorship studies and they report based on depth and temperature and things like that whether or not the shark's still alive after it's been released. And after 30 days that tag will pop up and let us know what's happened to the shark. Um, the second part of the study is focusing on blood work. Um, so I'm looking at factors like lactate, and uh, stress hormones and things like that in the blood to see how stressed the shark actually got during the capture. So I'm taking results from the blood work and the tags and I'm comparing those against factors of catch, so how long the shark was fighting on the line for, uh, what the water temperature was and also what specific techniques and gears the fishers were using at the time. And I'm trying to isolate different factors that could attribute to a higher survivorship or, or mortality after, or after capture. Um, the other portion is a survey. The main the idea of the survey is just to get out there and find out what recreational fishers and game fishers are actually doing when they catch sharks. It's just to get a better idea of what's actually going on in there. So hopefully if we're able to identify some features that will help the sharks survive with the fishing techniques, we'll be able to share those with anglers so that they're able to refine their fishing techniques um, and this, the fishery will become more sustainable.